especially walking around in the United States government, when I started working in government, like, oh my gosh, what was it like growing up in Saudi Arabia? And it was a very unexpected path because as you said uh, in my introduction, uh, my father did come from India. My mother was from Pakistan. They, um, they, you know, came to this country 40 years ago uh, with this sort of belief that anything was possible here. And they were Fulbright scholars. They met at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, fell in love. They were both, by the way, meant to go back to their respective countries and marry. They were, they were promised to be married to other people and fell in love and got married. And for those of you who, you know, it's funny, when I talk to American audiences, very often they do not know, but I imagine just about everybody on this call uh, is aware. Uh, back in 1965, an Indian man and a Pakistani woman could not go back and live in, in peace in either country. And that's how they got asylum here. And they moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is they had a deal where they would move to wherever they both got jobs or academics. And when I was two, my father was diagnosed with renal failure, and he was told he had five to ten years to live and to get his affairs in order. And um, and you know that is what led us. And you know it's one of the first lines I wrote in my book, which is when I, uh, you know, when my father was told he was dying, so he went out and he lived. And two months later, we moved to Saudi Arabia. My dad had this opportunity uh, to um, uh, have a sabbatical there, and they thought they would do it for one year just for one year, like a lot of expatriates thought they would do in 1977. And that was 44 years ago. I mean, they left and never came back. And I, um, it is a, I would say in hindsight that it was a gift that I didn't even know that we had at the time. We were a Muslim family. My parents were, wanted us to learn more about our faith and our region and that sort of that, that part of the world. There was a lot happening in 1977. For those of you on this call, I imagine um, maybe not everybody is as old as me, but just remembering what was happening. It was a convulsing kind of region uh, at the time. You could argue it's, it, it still is. But <clears throat> my parents, and in part because they didn't know how long my dad had, they just took us on these adventures around the world. And what it did for me was took us to spaces and places that just, you know, it introduces different languages and cultures. And so by the time I moved to the United States at 17 for university it was the first time I ever lived in this country. I had been to Asia, to Africa, all over the Middle East. And so learned that then obviously Europe and, you know, places where, you know, you just, what we learned is that there was so much more that we connected us that we had in common. I mean, I, we sat in tea ceremonies in Japan, just like we have tea ceremonies at home in India or Pakistan or in the Middle East or you know, every time I tell my American friends that, you know, I know we all are addicted to Starbucks, but coffee was actually native, you know, to Arabia. Um, and so I had a deep love for, for that part of the world. But because you asked me a very specific question, I don't know that it would have been as easy if that was the only existence that I had known. Because, yes, I could only take gymnastics until I was eight. There were no public gyms. There were no public theaters. My mother that taught herself Arabic. She was a sociologist and ha had to communicate um, with these women going to university. And it was very hard culturally and socially, it was very hard, but we also had this great sense of community. And so to have that kind of confidence and support in the community that comes with being part of a Middle Eastern culture, um, I think was actually excellent grounding for me to then be kind of thrown into the West for university and just kind of being on my own and just knowing where I came from. My dad always said that people are like plants and a plant is, a, is only as good as its roots. And if you nourish those roots and take care of that, the soil, the plant's going to be okay. And I think that's what's carried me through the last 48 years of my life.